Hey everybody, this is Rob with my channel Slash All. Whew. I know I've talked about my exercises, and I hadn't really been paying attention, but I guess I have lost weight. A lot of people have been wondering about what I'm doing to lose weight and how I'm working it in. And of course, I'm just doing that kettlebell walk and uh, kettlebell swings. So, you know, I walk the track, and it only takes me like... Uh, without the camera, it takes me like maybe 15 minutes. With the camera, it could maybe take me uh, 30 minutes because I'm doing the videos and I'm setting the bell down and picking it up at the same time. Whereas without the camera, I can just switch all the way through. This is the track here. Of course, the kettlebell swings are, are obvious. If not obvious, you can just look them up online. <coughs> and then, of course, I walk another mile or I walk as many miles as I could. And of course, I got to be careful about that because I don't want to cut into my sleeping time too much. Usually about a half hour is okay. So, uh, the, that's the overall mechanics. Um, I know there's not much more I can show. I mean, maybe if I had like, like walking around with an X-ray camera, I can show the muscles being used, but I don't know. I don't really have that kind of equipment. All I got is a camera phone. And of course I'm keeping it to a camera phone because I, I want to be able to pick up and go. And you can't do that with studio equipment. Sometimes there's just too much or, or uh, expensive cameras are just too heavy. So with that being said, look, let's, uh, let's start on the walks and I'll try to talk about the mechanics. So, uh, so if, if you're in Washington, or you're in some part of the world where you have the rubberized yellow track where uh, instead of uh, dirt, you have uh, this type of material for the track. Let me show it here. This type of material is consistent of the track. This is really good stuff. It actually gives and it's good to run on. And uh, so probably they're doing some kind of dash or something, some sort of Olympic dash for an Olympic sport. That's why it's, that's why it's laid out like this. If you're, uh, if you're running on the track, I had to go out and uh, get good shoes for running on the track because there's no give on the dirt. <clears throat> so I got Skechers Zero Impact shoes, and I got these at a Skechers outlet. I got them like three months ago, and they 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 last just fine. They they work just fine. Like like when I walk, I don't feel the I don't feel the impact underneath my feet. Uh, as far as these shoes go, Skechers uh, Skechers uh, running shoes because that's what they are. They're good for running because uh, let's see what do they have in it? They have a they have a sole in them. That provides uh, extreme support, so you don't feel the impact of the ground. I just, I just said that. But um, else, I'll see. They're lightweight. What's that say on the side there? It's a flex sole. Uh, that's what's in them. Uh, it'd be like some kind of air sole. I, I can't remember, but uh, or it could be it could be some kind of gel. I can't remember what the material is made out of, what it's called. <coughs> but these shoes are good for running and uh, maybe somewhat hiking. And it's because uh, even though they're extremely light, they're also they also have got some weight to them because of their construction and their design. So if you're walking around for a little while, you'll feel it. And of course, if you're hiking with them and you have to walk through streams, they'll definitely get a lot heavier because uh, the uh, the sole absorbs a lot of water. You can only do that so many times. I've only walked through water with these shoes twice, and I just let them dry out afterwards. So that being said, those are that's the mechanics of my shoes. And the track, and of course that type of uh, 
that type of material over there which consists of the majority of tracks that you see in Washington State because the weather is so bad so with that being said let's uh, let's start the uh, mile walk and I'll try to talk about the mechanics of uh, of going from point A to point B because because like a lot of the a lot of the physical pain I go through and a lot of the a lot of the intense feelings I get from carrying the kettlebell I don't really talk about so talk about this and and I'm lucky well I'm lucky because I got the track to myself I didn't have that the last couple times so if you're carrying a kettlebell and you don't have the track to yourself there's definitely some serious safety concerns that you have to be aware about especially when the bell gets too heavy and you have to toss it or drop it so generally you just want to make sure that there's nobody around you and then and I'll just do this as a, just an example. So, say for example, you're at your physical pain limit, or you're, or you're at your, uh, your, um, let's see, what's the threshold called? In comfort threshold, which might be different from physical pain. I found out that they're two different things. You can just toss the bell and just drop it, and then all the weight's taken off, including your core, because it's like you feel it in here your lower back, your upper back, and of course, your arms, which take the brunt of the weight. And that was an example, so let's keep going. And when I first started out, I didn't feel any pain for a little while. And then as my muscles started to adjust, they started to feel pain. So for example, i try to show the marking point here where I felt pain for a little while. Definitely don't feel it anymore. Uh, what I have been feeling for the last couple of weeks, it's not muscle fatigue, but uh, muscle discomfort, which really drives the mind crazy because it's different. It's a different sensation from pain. Whereas you've gone past the physical portion, and now the muscle itself is just straining itself to work minus the pain. So, like about right here, for about three weeks is where I felt the physical pain. And then of course, I'd, uh, I'd work through it, get to, the, get to the marking point where it turns, lift it up, and uh, keep going. And of course my left arm was weaker than my right arm, so I felt it more in my left arm. And uh, even even for even for a little while around these around these curves, after two or three laps, excuse me, I felt the discomfort in this arm about right near the end. And of course, uh, I try not to cheat myself. I try to stand straight up with the belt to the side, so. The, uh, my core is working to keep me up instead of walking like this or walking like that and I, I felt myself doing that a couple times and I had to straighten it out and I was doing that because of the pain and I just forced myself to work through the pain or the discomfort what's really important to note is that the pain comes first and as your muscles start to adjust then physical discomfort comes and that's uh, that's a sensation that the mind's not very used to. And I think it I think it might come with actually carrying weight because if you're pumping, pushing, or pulling weight, you're only putting uh, stress on the muscle for about maybe a half a second, full second tops to complete a rep. Whereas this, a rep is completed every 100 meters. And then, uh, and then the muscles, muscles aren't used to, uh, continuous stress. But, uh, I mean, I mean, it works out. I mean, uh, people should be able to do some kind of lifting of weight, even if it's not traditional lifting. It's because I personally think, and this is my own thoughts, that the body's more conceptualized for carrying weight instead of pushing, pulling, or lifting weight. 
because, uh, like I do curls, I do all kinds of weightlifting techniques in the past. I still do some of that today. And the muscles, the individual muscles seem to have a, a threshold or a limit to how far they can go. Whereas, I don't know what this is, go around this. Whereas, uh, whereas carrying weight and walking, the body can, can do that almost continuously, depending on the individual and how far they're willing to take it. And of course, I'm not feeling any pain anymore. In fact, after, uh, after uh, two more weeks, I am going to graduate up to 20 kilograms, which is 44 pounds, and then work my way from there. And I've tested lifting up the 44 pound kettlebell and the 55 pound kettlebell. And I can tell when I was standing there with them that, uh, that um, the core was coming more into play because they were a lot heavier. So there is that to think about. And of course, it'll take some time for my arms to adjust and my muscles to adjust. And there's always an adjustment period of pain and discomfort. And uh, some of my client's employees, uh, my company's client's employees, were asking about what I was doing, doing to lose weight. Because to them, it looks like I've lost weight. Um, it, it doesn't look like it to me, but I don't really pay as much attention to the weight portion as I should. I pay attention to the eating habits and the eating portion and the exercise portion. And it seems like the weight portion is just falling in line with that. So there is that. And I was telling them, I was, uh, I was just walking um, a mile or two with a kettlebell every day and adjusting, adjusting to weight uh, or scaling the weight once my body adjusted to it. And they thought that was a good idea. I remember way in the past uh, to thin recruits out, the Marine Corps would have, uh, they'd have a football field then they have sand with buckets. You shovel the sand into the buckets, and then you carry it across the field, you dump it, and then you shovel again, and you walk back. And of course, that could have been an all-day thing. I heard that from uh, from my friend who did serve in the Marines and did do all that stuff. It, it really wasn't for me, and uh, he told me that I, I had my life together, and then the, the military just wasn't wasn't for me. I also have uh, people in my company who have worked for the Navy and people who have worked for other branches who've told me the same thing. So I just decided not to go that route. Law enforcement and any type of military route. Instead, I decided to apply myself individually and see for how far I can take myself. And so far, my outlook of... Uh, continuous learning and exercise, and of course, uh, uh, economic learning has really worked out for me, and I'm, uh, I'm definitely on my way. It took me a long time to learn this stuff, and I mean a really long time. It's like, uh, I think his name is John McPhee from Trigger Tying TV, or the Sheriff of Baghdad, I can't remember which guy is which. But I remember he stated one time, and I'm quoting him here, that uh, if you learn something on your own, it takes a long time to learn. If you have somebody there to teach you and work with you, the learning time is cut in half. So that was, that was the path that I didn't know about that I took, and it took me a long time to learn about economics, about choices, about how to manage your time. And of course I had people there to help me, but I wasn't really good in the listening department. So, 
So one day I just started paying attention and now everything has worked out. Well, everything has worked out to a degree. I'm, uh, I'm definitely on my way with my education and, uh, and, uh, finances in my life. And, uh, oh man, I just, I can't think of the words, but the overall direction of my life is on, is on its way. And then all the little details are just falling into place because I'm trying to make the right choices. Boy, I kind of trailed off of the mechanics of the exercise there. Uh, that's all right. Now this is going to be the, uh, uh, the last lap with the introduction video. I don't want them to become too large because then it just, it takes too much time to transfer. Even with an SD drive and different standards of USB drives, it still takes a little bit of time to transfer. And of course, I'm using Linux and it's a light operating system. <coughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, that was a little bit of spiel about my life. It's not what I meant to talk about. But uh, while we're on the subject, the reason why I limit my timing is so I can get enough sleep and be on work on time. And that's part of the uh, time management portion. So I'm never long here. I'm never out here any longer from uh, from uh, 9.30 to 10. Uh, beyond that, I just, I just head home. I just go right to bed. Wake up at 4.30 or 5. Make myself a breakfast. And then, uh, oh, here it is again. Walk around it. Make myself a breakfast. And uh, go to work. Right now, I'm on a, a three-hour eating schedule. And I've cut back my portions to just, like, snack-sized portions. But they're still, it's still normal food, like like sandwiches and water and stuff people would normally eat. I just cut it back to three hours. And that's really seemed to help me. And of course, uh, in the morning, I'm uh, eating egg whites and uh, oatmeal. <sighs> the egg whites, I just, I just buy in the carton. And then I just, I uh, heat up the pan, put on some cooking spray, wait till it's fully heated, and then I fry it. Sometimes I throw cheese in there so it melts into the egg, or uh, maple sausage, and then just cook it all together. I call that a breakfast. I love, uh, I love mixing sausage with eggs, because it just, or just the egg whites, because it just gives it a flavor that the egg whites don't have. And then, of course, uh, with my oatmeal, I soak the oats in uh, low-fat milk, throw in some cinnamon, throw a little bit of light sugar in there, make sure it's all, make sure the oatmeal is three-fourths a cup. Then I just throw it in the microwave, heat it up for about a minute, two minutes, and then just eat that as is. And of course, that's really good, too. And of course, this takes all about a, about a half hour. And then, um, I the video's almost done here because we're almost to the end. With the lunch portion, I just make wheat sandwiches. Throw in, uh, cheese and meat, no additives or anything like that. And I just break it down to three for every three hours, along with a bottle of water. So I'm not really dieting. I'm just trying to approach a constrained view of eating normal food. And, uh, that's the mechanics of my eating and my working out. <sighs> now I need to uh, finish uh, the rest of this mile. This is a lap two. Uh, this is lap three here. So we'll definitely catch up with you guys during the swings in the next lap. See you guys later.